Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm talking about the book Curry, which can be very hard to read because it's very pale on pale. Uh, Curry, A Tale of Cooks and Conquerors by Lizzie Collingham. Um, and I picked this book up at a buy the pound place, so I paid very little money for it. I paid probably um, six or seven cents. And uh, I bought it because I have a fascination with books that have a very tight focus. And I thought, Curry falls under the category of a very tight focus. But the title's a bit of a misnomer because it didn't just talk about curry. Not surprising. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly hefty book. Um, it talked about, in essence, the entire food history of India and with, a, with more of a tight focus on the effect that three waves of invaders have had on uh, Indian cuisine and how those... Uh, invaders have had their food impacted by Indian cuisine. And the three waves of invaders are the Mughals, the Dutch, and the British. Um, and I found the book to be fascinating. I will admit I thought that it just went a little bit long. Again, I've, I'm noticing over time that how much I respect a good editor. There are times I think a good editor can come in there and tighten something up and make a good book better by not letting necessarily letting the author wander as much, which is an ironic statement coming from me who wanders constantly in his videos. Um, and I have no editor. Uh, the first time, so first time someone said that I had no editor. And the book does open with the Mughals, which is the, the first major wave of invaders of uh, India. And these the Mughals were our, uh, is an Islamic people that came out of uh, Central Asia and moved into um, India. And of course the Dutch came from Europe and then the British followed them. Um, and both the Mughal and the Dutch left an, a real uh, imprint on Indian cuisine in a way that the British didn't. However, there's an entire chapter in here dedicated to tea. Thank you, Mr. Motorcycle. An entire chapter dedicated to tea, and I quite enjoyed the chapter that was dedicated to tea. I'm a fan of tea. I drink tea regularly. Um, I drink tea straight up, just tea. Um, Twining's Irish breakfast tea is my favorite to have at home. Um, and I didn't know that it was the British that popularized tea drinking in India. Tea existed in India, but it was always viewed as a medicinal uh, beverage, something you only drank with other things added to it when you were feeling ill. And apparently there are people in India that still tend to view this. Sydney is a very big country and there's lots of locations that aren't necessarily the most cosmopolitan. But India today is like the largest tea producer and tea drinking country, country per capita, you know, because it's such a big place, um, in the world. And it was the British that really kind of popularized tea drinking. And they did it intentionally to make money. They actually had companies that sold tea actually sent teams of people out into the field to show Indian Indians how to properly prepare tea and its verifications as you know a social gathering point, things like that. Um, really quite fascinating. They had to go in there and kind of bridge the caste system to try to get people to from different social circles to use tea as a, as a social beverage. Um, and it took quite a while to achieve this end. Quite interesting. Now, speaking of the caste system, I'm going to freely admit that was the hardest part for me in the book, is the caste system and the deeply ingrained misogyny of India in the past, and unfortunately, there is still a great deal of that in the present. Even though the caste system has not officially been in existence for decades, it still has an impact on of Indian culture. And in fact, it wasn't that long ago that uh, an Indian person from one caste would actually be served tea in a, in a disposable ceramic cup as a sign that they were unworthy because the cups would be destroyed after they were they, they, they drunk them. Um, and that actually became a point of protest where if this group was served with this, but they would protest right there, you were violating the law kind of a thing. And uh, and I can completely understand that. The idea that someone's handing you a disposable container because you are unclean. Yeah, I, I can see how that would have a massive negative impact on someone's life. 
So I had a hard time with the cast system. It kind of it kind of enraged me as they were talking about it. And I'm not saying the author glossed over it. She did not. Um, but it's it's the kind of thing that really irritates me. Really, uh, really makes me angry. But overall, an excellent um, book. I really enjoyed myself. I uh, would recommend this to anyone that's into food, and particularly into Indian food. And there are recipes in the book. At the end of every chapter, and sometimes even inside the chapters themselves, there are recipes about the food they are discussing, which is really quite delightful. It made me smile. Um, kind of ironically, ironic is that curries themselves, there's something in the traditional curry spice mix that I can't eat. I don't know what it is, but I know that I can't eat curries. They do nasty things to my digestive system. Um, and I used to like curries at one time, but when my diet changed um, after being diagnosed with uh, diabetes, it, that was one of the things that I seemed to have lost the ability to consume, such as, such as it is. Um, but Indian food, by and large, is a great uh, choice for many people, particularly if you are vegetarian, like my, my wife is, is, has become vegetarian. And Indian food is an awesome option. And in fact, I've heard it said that India is the only place that in the world that a vegetarian can truly feel in their own because it is such an easy thing to, to, to live with in that country. Um, and which, because it can be very difficult to be a vegetarian in many places, um, though it's becoming easier in the United States, at least in, in, in Europe. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, the book, and I will admit that this has one of the corniest quotes on the front that I have encountered as a book cover blurb. Part map, world map, part menu, this book is entirely delicious. <sighs> really, Time Magazine? 